There are actually two elements that make or break the perfect snap or selfie. First of all, it's the makeup that you're wearing, and secondly, is the lighting that you're under. So, we're going to be putting lighting and makeup to the ultimate test. So what we're going to do is over the next two days, we're going to put a full face on of drugstore camera ready, HD, photo ready type makeup. And then on the second day, we're going to use all high end. Personally, I really want to find out whether it's worth investing in makeup that's camera ready and seeing if it actually makes a difference, you know, because there's a really big difference between spending $15 at the drugstore versus like $80 for a foundation, high end, you know? I wanna test that. As usual, we need to talk about the differences between HD makeup and regular makeup. So first of all is coverage. Like this is one thing that kind of blew my mind because normally when you think about HD, you're thinking about higher coverage, long wear, caked on makeup, but it's actually the complete opposite. Brands that do HD foundations actually is a lot sheerer and more natural looking. Okay, so the light scattering ingredients or light blurring ingredients very often contains mica or silica, crystals, quartz, sometimes even crushed pearls. Basically, these are reflective things that just make the light bounce off of your skin and it just makes you create this luminous look. So it's distracting your eyes from looking at the blemish. And that's why a lot of the glow and that you know whole shimmery look kind of works sometimes, especially in certain lights, because it reflects so much light that it kind of blinds you and you don't see the imperfections. A lot of photo ready or camera ready foundations or powders normally do not contain any SPF. If you have any type of SPF products in your skincare or in your makeup, it's going to reflect on camera. Often the powders are more finely milled, they're crushed more finer, so it fits into every little crevice on the skin. Last but not least is oil-free or mattifying. So a lot of the camera-ready or photo-ready products contain a lot of mattifying ingredients that absorb excess oil. And when it's in front of a camera, the glowy can sometimes often look very, very oily. So we wanna minimize the shine as much as possible. And then on each day, we're gonna test these under three lighting conditions. So one will be natural daylight, the second one will be office, and then the third one will be a professional studio. So these are the three kind of lighting situations situations that can really test whether this makeup works or not. But before we get into it, make sure you click the subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get all the new notifications of our videos. And yeah, let's go. Day one of our photo finish makeup test. For primer, I'm gonna use this CoverGirl Skin Smoothing Primer. Squeeze it onto my hand. It's quite soft, it's not runny at all. And I'm just gonna put this onto my cheeks where I have the most pores but also the forehead to smooth that over because in photos, light tends to just shine onto my forehead. I don't know if it's actually filling the pores or not, but it's just kind of like very hydrating. Everything is about a flawless skin finish, right? So primer is actually so important to create an even canvas if you think about it. Let's go in with this Wet n Wild Photo Focus. And it says it helps to eliminate white particle reflection. So it actually has this like spatula thing. But just pressing that in using the Beauty Blender because the only time that I've really gotten a really flawless skin look was with Beauty Blenders or a sponge. It's not shiny, but it's also not matte and it looks very natural. This foundation feels really light and at first it doesn't seem like a lot of coverage, which was something that I was more concerned about. But as I mentioned, usually HD foundations are a lot more lightweight and it wants your skin to look like skin and not so caked on. So basically what finishing powders will do is really like um, tie everything together. I like to just kind of buff it in like this. It really gives the best flawless skin finish. This does not contain any SPF, which is the main selling point for this powder as it won flashback on camera. But let's put it to the test. It definitely feels very like... I feel like I can see my pores a lot with this. I don't know what it is. So it might actually be the primer that's not doing a good job in 
filling my pores and then we'll go into the three locations. So first is outdoors. So anytime you're outside, try not to be directly under the sun because that will cast shadows and make you look kind of creepy. <laughs> and you also can't open your eyes when it's like blasting into your face as well. It's about like 10 o'clock in the morning. Just to have a look at my makeup in the direct sunlight and without trying to squint my eyes, you pretty much see a lot more because this the sun is so harsh and the lighting is so harsh okay so like ice pick scarring and things like that comes through a lot more clearer it also could have to do with the primer not filling in the holes as much or the just foundation is not smoothing over as much um, the powder itself is definitely more for a um, a flashed photography. Okay, it's five o'clock. So the makeup's been on for a while now, but it's still looking flawless. Look at this. <laughs> so we're under the shade, which is generally where you would want to like take a photo. I think it's the primer that didn't do a good job in filling my pores because the, even out here when normally it would be very nice, um, I can still see them. But if you take a photo like here, it's very flawless. So I think the foundation is actually really good and I'm still really loving the texture of it because it's not shiny but it's not too matte and it just looks very natural and it kind of still feels like I'm not wearing a lot on the face. So this soft focus is probably the best when it comes to taking pictures of like people because it's just very, it gives that like blurry, dreamy kind of effect. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon and it's a little bit overcast at the moment so it has been raining as you can see under this lightning um, my skin still looks pretty flawless actually this is probably the most flattering lighting because it almost mimics like a sunset because at the back here you can see the sun just a little bit but it's still more of a forecast Moving on to the other side of the spectrum is office lighting. We are at a desk setting under office lights. These are office lights. This is the depressing, sad reality. As you can see with this type of lighting, it's not smooth, it's not soft, it's very like harsh and it's not very flattering. It's a lot of the tungsten lights are quite a lot cooler lights as you can see. Um, again, my skin looks pretty flawless and especially from a distance. Close up, it's where you can actually see the crevices and eyes pick scarring, but no one's gonna be really looking that close on camera. It's usually at a distance like this because the lighting's from above. You can see the shadow from my lashes and whatnot, but normally if you move away from the lighting, you can kind of see the different types of lighting on the skin. But also like the color of my skin, it looks very blue. You can tell there's makeup on my face. It doesn't look natural. Office lights normally use fluorescent and LED lights, which cast a greenish or a bluish tinge onto the face. So it kind of looks like you've been suffering through food poisoning for the last three days. So far the, the foundation wears quite well. I haven't seen much oiliness around the nose yet or any separation with makeup. So then the third setting is going to be studio lighting. All right guys, so this is kind of the studio lighting that I would normally film in. And you can still kind of see like the oiliness starting to come through around the nose but other than that like I've obviously wiped my nose and whatnot so the makeup has come off around this area but other than that it's sitting like pretty much perfect on the skin it has a mood it feels comfortable it doesn't feel drying or tightening according to this lighting my face still looks pretty flawless now I haven't touched up or matted down or done anything to my face I feel like this primer for me didn't do a lot of like filling the pores. Guys, I'm in the studio now, so I'll just show you what it looks like typically. So this is a backlight, which is what lights the hair. This is what lights the background. Now this is a reflector for what um, casts like light onto my face. So all that together gives me this look. This is what we do every time when we film. It also blurs over a lot of the pores that I think you would be able to see in real life. I feel like the powder is the thing that's giving me this like kind of soft glow because I did really smash that into my face. That foundation is actually really working out well. So everything is kind of showing up really nicely on screen and on camera. I guess a lot of you might not have been exposed to this type of lighting unless you've done any sort of recording. And generally in a studio setting, because everything is kind of like more professional level, 
the quality lights, the quality of cameras. They're designed to make you look good, let's just say that. <laughs> I actually decided to go with this one, which is called This Works. It's actually pretty cool. It is a primer and a mask in one. It's more like a moisturizer as opposed to a silicone-based primer. The foundation I chose is this new one from Smashbox HD. Now this one actually feels really light too, but the coverage is definitely a lot more obvious and it dries down pretty quick. I've had this powder for so long. It is so micro milled fine that you can't really see anything. So all I do is just sprinkle some on the cap and just dust away until I feel like I've touched all areas of my face. It definitely feels a lot drier afterwards, but I really can't see any traces of powder. It's like magic. All right, face is done. For high end, I'm gonna start off with this Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. It's also oil free, which is one of the things that we said a lot of like photo ready kind of makeup is. It's oil free because it doesn't have that flashback. When I put it on, I can see like the shine that I had kind of mattified already. Generally, you just wanna concentrate this where your pores are and also on your forehead because that gets really shiny. And then for the foundation, I had this Givenchy Photo Perfection Foundation and it's got SPF 20. So it is quite runny as you can see. The best way to get the most airbrush look is with a beauty blender. Press it into your skin gently but firmly at the same time like a child. <laughs> I would say this is a medium coverage it feels really nice on the skin, it feels very light. The less foundation you actually have on, the better it will look on photos because especially like really clear cameras, it will pick up on any caking, it'll pick up on any sort of like flaking as well. Layer it on as much as you need and not anything too much. So I'm gonna use this Wonder 2 Perfect Selfie. It's actually like very, I don't know, it's not as fine as I would have thought and kind of Swirl it into my face to really work the powder in. Okay, so it's fully translucent. Ooh, I think it's already giving that kind of like airbrushed look. But it also like refines the skin. Even though I am like wider, it's because the foundation is still kind of settling in. That is the look, guys. This is the high end photo finish look. We're gonna test this out in three locations. So let's go. So in the bright sunlight, you can see my skin. Well, I do have a bit of highlighter on, so it kind of blurs. But everything seems pretty matte. And honestly, it feels kind of dry as well. But other than that, everything seems to fit, set. They're definitely right about being like lighter than normal foundation. It feels really lightweight, even though the coverage is quite high. And it actually dries down really quickly. So you kind of have to move the product onto the skin really fast. You can still kind of see the like imperfections up close but if you're putting the camera really far you're not really gonna see it, especially at this kind of lighting because it's like almost blinding so it's like three o'clock now standing under some shade under the shady willow trees so the makeup still actually looks really good outside it's not creasing or anything normally I crease around the nose area but there's no, well there's like minimal creasing and the blush is all still on and like far away if I were to take a photo, which I will, I feel like it still looks really mattified. So I think the powder, that like Wonder Selfie powder really did a good job as well as the primer. But even when the oils have come out, it still looks really natural, especially outside. It doesn't look shiny and greasy, but it looks kind of like that natural dewy effect. So yeah, actually it looks very good. <laughs> I'm at a cafe actually, but this is pretty much what indoor lighting will look like. It's still very glowy. Under this sort of like down lights, as you can see the lights come from above the head, the little eye spick scarring, things like that, that become very obvious because it creates that shadow. But if I move away from it, so now it's hitting directly like this, it's not as obvious. Everything looks pretty flawless. All right, so we are now in the office, in the meeting room. Cupboard. <laughs> and you can definitely see, well I can definitely see, like it's kind of this sickly green color and this is normally like all you see. You get like a little bit of the forehead light. The tint of the color of my skin doesn't look very healthy like it did when it was outside. The texture of my skin actually looks very coarse. 
and it just makes you look like you have a lot of makeup on like it doesn't look glowy or natural so I'm at um, the indoor department lighting as you can see my skin actually looks really red at this lighting I just wanted to show you this really cool um, lighting system here the candlelight um, sunlight so I'm gonna play with these and show you how it looks differently on my skin right so this is supposed to be daylight so how drastically it can change my complexion and that's nothing so we're in the studio now this is the background so this diffuser basically makes the shadows on the face a little bit so it just kind of like wraps around the whole face and then depending on like the angles of where you put different reflectors and lights it'll like cast a different shape of your face so this makeup is definitely well suited for the studio as you can see it looks like pretty flawless and from far away it just looks like airbrushed Bing! So my makeup has been on for about 10 hours. This is kind of like the studio lighting or close to a studio lighting. From the lighting perspective, my skin still looks pretty flawless. Makeup has stayed on pretty much all day. When it comes into harsh lighting like this, you can see everything's toned down. So my eyebrows look lighter. My actual texture of the skin looks way more flawless than it is close up and even if I bring the camera in closer it still has a blurring effect you don't really see a lot of blemishes unless we're going in like macro side type of thing so obviously there is definitely more of a blurring effect in terms of photo ready uh, makeup there is definitely um, the hefty price tag, but I think the outcome does speak for itself at the end of the day It's whatever you're comfortable with. So so far. I'm actually liking the wear of it. I don't feel too greasy I'm pretty impressed with the foundation or the whole combo of that um, primer foundation and powder so that is the video guys. I hope you guys found it helpful I won't say that to the naked eye. I mean like people who just look at you in real life I wouldn't necessarily say it looks any different, um, but I think there is a slight kind of blurring effect, soft focus look that is very flattering when it comes to taking photos. But just remember, it's not just about, you know, always taking the perfect selfie. There's a quote I remember reading while I was waiting for the bathroom one time at a cafe, and it said, life is like a camera. You focus on what's important, capture the good times, develop from the negative, and if things don't work out, take another shot. It's kind of perfect, right? So just remember to just like be yourself. As you can probably see on my social medias, I like to enjoy a lot of things and then I think about, oh my God, I should share this with my followers and then I go ahead and do it. And sometimes I miss it, sometimes it's too late, sometimes it's not my perfect ideal selfie or the setting, but at least I feel like I know it and it's in here and I've enjoyed it. Don't feel pressured into having all those makeup or having to wear photo ready makeup all the time just what makes you feel comfortable so i hope you guys found this video interesting let us know if you have any other ideas in the comments below make sure you check out our merch um, if you don't see it in that bottom bar we'll leave the description to our store below it's got like t-shirts sweaters mugs my favorite other mugs um, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video bye